Hey guys, Brett here again. Um, so again, just want to quickly touch on a few improvised techniques. This will mainly be apparent for people conducting the remote courses. So the first one I'm looking at is just a, an improvised pelvic binder. Ideally, we want them to be carrying a commercial um, pelvic binder or pelvic splint, sorry. But in a pinch, there's a way that you can create one with your, your SAM splint. So you'll need a SAM splint, the wider the better. Um, otherwise, you're just going to have to create some padding, okay, just to make sure it's not pulling too tightly or too narrowly, narrowly on the um, on the tissues. A tourniquet, if they've got one, hopefully they all are carrying one if they're going into remote environments. Um, and then a knife or some scissors to make some holes in the SAM splint, just to allow you to thread that through. So again, everyone should potentially be carrying a tourniquet, a SAM splint and a scissors or a knife or something to, to work with something like that out in the bush. So again, here's one I've just prepared a little bit earlier. So the tricky part here is cutting through the SAM splint. The metal is very, very thin. So again, I wouldn't suggest pre-preparing them because obviously that just loses the functionality of that splint. Um, but I've just created it. So first of all, I've folded over one end and then you're gonna create two holes. The main reason for that is that when you apply tension to that hole or that area, um, it does tend to rip and pull. So we wanna make sure there's at least a five to 10 centimeter gap from the edge to where that hole starts, okay? And also just be aware that when you cut through that metal, it's gonna be quite sharp, okay? So use some scissors to cut through, but then if you have some tape or some bandages that you can put inside there, um, and just be aware that when you're applying that to your patient, that if there's any sharp bits digging in, it's gonna be really, really uncomfortable for them. So I've done that on both ends. And then from there, you thread the tourniquet through. Okay, so again, just rehearse this with them because this is the one situation where people come a little bit unstuck because they thread it the wrong way, it doesn't work. So making sure that that tourniquet is facing up, light on the ground, slide it through, okay? And then you should, like we've worked with all our tourniquets before, you can almost just click it on there so you know exactly where that end is, okay? From there, all we're doing is applying your, your pelvic splint as per the normal guidelines. You've got that end of that tourniquet, okay? You're coming across, you're undoing it, and just start to slide it through you're going to go through that hole. Again, making sure it's the right way up. Readjusting as appropriate. And then from there, you're going to start bringing that over and you're going to lock it off, okay? Try not to use the windlass to tighten it up straight away, just like the normal application of the tourniquet. We wanna try and pull as much as that slack and you can use that windlass like you would for a normal SAM um, pelvic splint where you pull on the opposite direction. It's gonna be a two person job. You're pulling, pulling, pulling until it's nice and tight. It's locked off. Just be aware of where this is sitting. So if you can try offset that windlass so it's not directly over the groin, obviously over time, that's gonna become quite uncomfortable for that patient. Okay, so try and have it offset slightly. And you're just gonna to have to readjust the windlass, or sorry, the material, to get it sitting correctly. Okay, so as you can see, they are quite fiddly, so it is gonna take a bit of time, but just making sure it's correct, especially if they're gonna be on for a long time, okay. Nice and tight, and then if you need to make it tighter, if you can't pull it tighter because mechanical the end is just not working, you can use that windlass to try and tighten it up a little bit more. Again, same principle to apply locking mechanism, whether you're using the cap or the soft T, just make sure it's locked in correctly. Okay, and then you're gonna reassess. So main things to note is just making sure those buckles are offset, okay, not directly over the groin. Be aware of those holes, those little objects, the sharp objects coming out. The metal, we just want to make sure they're protected and they're not going to be digging into the skin, okay? And then again, just making sure you're applying it correctly as per the normal guidelines.